So I'm going to call the meeting to order 605. Um, and today's meeting, for the most part, we're going to be doing some policy monitoring and some board planning. Um, and you'll notice that um, we removed the selfie valve of the meeting evaluator off because we're going to try that new policy to do it before we can do it uh, in place of that. So I'm going to move us uh, on to uh, public comment. And before that starts, I just want to remind our audience that um, this is a time for you to speak to us. We give you three minutes. Um, the way it's set up is we don't, it's not a conversation. It's just a chance for us to hear what you have to say. Um, so there won't be any back and forth. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll move on to the rest of our uh, agenda. So, do we have either online? And I'm going to rely on you to kind of uh, monitor that. And then, do we have anyone here? Who is that? We are here to take it in. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So, yes, I did. Sure. 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 I just had a question first. The minutes just represent those of the board or everybody who spoke? Minutes from the last. From the main, yep. the regular one? Yeah. Uh, generally, our board clerk can speak to that. She tries to cover. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy when we have so many public comments. I try my best. If you have corrections, please don't. I just saw that mine and John Clark's comments well, you know, I think they have they have to watch Orca. I I can't get everything down. Okay, just check. Um, I see. Oh, right on the slide. Right. Maybe I missed it. Thought I was in the right place for a minute. Slide falls. But anyway, you know, I came to talk about school security today. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have 32 years of experience in uh, law enforcement. Uh, and with the current school shooting that occurred a few weeks ago, the shooting in Buffalo, and all the way back to Columbine the year. Uh, the school is here. You could implement metal detectors. You could implement, you know, bag searches every day. You could implement single entry door. You could implement all the safety precautions you want to implement. But I'm not saying I would do it. Just saying somebody like me with my training i spent six years on state police swat team there's lots of people out there with combat experience they're in this school in 30 seconds and they can do whatever they want and no matter what kind of security you put in here it's not going to work if somebody's determined to get one in this school the only i mean the only real solution is to have armed people in your school that's it uh, Mass shootings end three ways. Guy commits suicide. Guy turns himself over to the police. I'm not going to trust my life on either one of them, because that's not usually the outcome. Last one is somebody shoots him. And I know nobody wants to talk about these things. We don't want to be a violent society, but the sad truth is we live in a society that's sometimes violent. And the only way you're going to stop a bad guy with a gun in one of these schools is a good guy. And I really think you need to consider, and the state law already allows it, but the state law says about guns in schools with the superintendent's permission, he can allow people to be armed in the school. So I would recommend a couple things to the board to think about over the next few months, especially since we're getting the summer for the next school year. But think about hiring former law enforcement, former military, who are uh, show that they have training in uh, tactics, and shoot, don't shoot, shoot situations, um, They've been psychologically screened, which I know most police, all police officers have to be. Uh, or you can see if there's responsible teachers, staff who want to care. Um, this is what the is Israel, uh, Israel, uh, Israeli government did. Uh, they were being bombed by uh, suicide bombers or 
repeatedly in schools. So they armed teachers and they put security in schools. There were a couple incidents that were stopped rather quickly and uh, the bombers saw that they were no longer a, uh, a threat. So, and they stopped, they stopped. So. Thank you. Just one quick example, these windows, one shotgun blast and I am in. I'm in and the school is done for until the sheriff show up. It, it, it would be a terrible thing. I, I think they could really try to prevent that. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other comments? Got any online? Let's see any online. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to move on um, and I, I thought we could just review just because I know I heard from a couple of board members just concern about the article that was in the paper about whether or not we were in violation of meeting law. So I figured it's a review for the board just in terms of education, just, you know, what is in place and um, so I thought we could sort of open that up uh, during that last, uh, during the, for the special meeting, the warrant, the warning that was called into question. Uh, Linda was on vacation. She has a right to go on vacation. <laughs> and um, she had given instructions to Lane. Lane followed her directions. So I don't know um, if board members have certain questions or if we just want to kind of go through again sort of how that operates in general the board relies on linda as the board clerk to make sure warnings go out she knows where they need to go she knows when they need to go um, and she gets it out to the paper as well there was some question on the uh, recording of the meeting and Lane looked into that. I can talk on all the, uh, the claims that the Herald made. Okay. Does, does the board feel like they want to just sort of review and be aware of sort of anything more in regard to the open meeting and making sure we're following open meeting laws? Uh, I just had one question. What, what our designated um, posting locations are? Um, all the schools, OSS um, D schools the three town clerks i posted on the front window of our building um the website mm -hmm. ben merrill gets it yeah okay. thank you and i think lane's covered it pretty well yeah. in his report i don't have any questions okay. i don't know if you wanted me to go and talk or uh, uh, that up to the are there any other questions from board members regarding sort of you know how we do and how we make sure we're in compliance with open meeting laws. And maybe just, it, it might be helpful, Lane, mm -hmm. since um, with Act 78, there were some changes all along because the hybrid structure of meeting, um, you did a little research into that, so maybe it's- Yeah, and, that, and that. being the person that sent the warning out that day, I also went to the state website and reviewed the law before I sent it out to make sure that it was going to the right places. It's my understanding in writing from both the owner of the paper as well as the reporter, there will be corrections in, I'm hoping it's tomorrow's paper, but there will be corrections in the paper. Um, after I had a discussion with them and talked about the law and then they went and checked with their own folks to see if I was right and came back and said, yes, you were. Um, first kind of claim that came out by the press that was false was that um, they stated that the warning had not been placed on the school website. It was. It went up on uh, May 12th. It was four days before the special meeting and the requirement is 24 hours. The district typically pulls warnings down after the meetings are over. The agendas stay up, but the warnings come down so it doesn't confuse uh, the public. Um, there was another claim in there that the district had to have the minutes posted within five days of the meeting. Act 78 extends this to 10 days due to the COVID pandemic. Um, our clerk was out for the full week of the meeting, which happened on Monday. And pretty much like all of us, um, she's managing a heavily increased workload uh, due to the number of staff out each day to post. 
Um, so we were in compliance there. Um, another claim that's pretty much false is that the meeting had to be recorded. Um, in reviewing the law, this seems to apply only to remote meetings. Um, our meeting was actually held in person. It was posted as a meeting uh, in a physical public location and a full quorum of the board was present in that location. Uh, we do allow folks to log in, and but the purpose of that is to increase participation, not because of that was a remote meeting at the time. Um, further, uh, Orca Media, who has provided exceptional service to the board and the community consistent, consistently records all our school events, so much so that if they are not there, that is an unusual circumstance, which is allowable law. Um, there was one that actually had done a little bit more research on since I wrote the superintendent's report on the, the claim that the district needed to send a copy of the agenda to the press, specifically Act 78 kind of buried at the very end of the last sentence um, states that it needs to be sent to the news, newspaper. This one depends on the intent of the law. And if you read the law, um, the intent is for the paper to do a public announcement of that warning. Given our time frame, there was no way for the paper to publicly announce that warning because our meeting would have passed before their next paper was published. So that one's a little more, more questionable, uh, but the other three are, are very clear. Um, the other thing that we always do, regardless um, of our feelings on the matter, is that if, if uh, people bring up concerns, is we always go back and kind of review everything and update what our procedures and protocols are. And I did send the updated protocols to the board um, based upon that. That review was done on June 2nd. So. Are there any other questions for Lane or Linda regarding? So we are refuting that there was any violation of the open meeting law. Yeah, and there will be corrections in the paper based upon what, what, what I've gotten writing from the uh, Harold. And I just wanted the board to feel comfortable that, you know, Linda, Linda is aware of what needs to be done and she takes care of it and then she's away, if she plans to be away, she did um, convey that to the person who was going to be responsible for it. So. I take that. Um, child very seriously and if there hadn't been a special meeting I would have been doing it mm -hmm. for you guys yeah <clears throat> okay so I think it we're we're good there there's nothing to cure nothing to cure uh, the, the new procedures um, when they were developed yeah. go far in excess of what is Right. And we were all there. We all know what our intentions were. Mm -hmm. There was no overall well, over. Um, okay, so let's move on then to um, our next uh, agenda item. Um, comes from our our training that we had with. Um, Jackie Wilson, and in that we are sort of beginning to look at and think about um, creating our uh, ownership linkage plan. Um, and sorry, it's sort of, ah, let me put it right there. Ah, but it's right there. Okay. Um, I thought I printed one off. Um, <coughs> So I thought I would encourage the board to begin to do is one think about um, how we want to go about um, planning. If you look at the um, three sort of next steps that uh, Jackie sent to us, um, we had she had she had sort of. Uh, Put together uh, a review in terms of uh, revisiting our ends, uh, increasing community engagement, and uh, developing and implementing a plan for board member onboarding and continuous board development. Um, so, uh, just 
just curious uh, how we want to move forward with this. If we want to try and um, start working on a plan during a July meeting, if we want to get a committee together to sort of work in between or how we want to tackle. Uh, this would be for the coming year of board work. So we're sort of coming to the close now of this sort of board cycle. And then July is sort of a, a working, can be a working meeting. And then we sort of start with August and move, move forward through to the end of June for the next uh, full year of board work. I'm curious. Um, uh, my opinion would be to work on it together rather than um, select a committee. Mm -hmm. That way we can all be more involved in the process of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. becoming one of the owners. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, maybe. So, I think that would be good for the summer. The July. July yeah. Have it a working meeting where we're working together yeah. to create a plan. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else? What, what, what are other people think about that? I'm fine with it. I'm not going to be here for <laughs> <laughs> We already know that. And we totally approved <laughs> I would like to be part of it, but it's totally fine. I so I'm guessing that it's going to pretty much be along the lines of what we sort of came away with, with the training that we were in, unless uh, do people feel like there's something that they've been thinking about since that training where they're like, oh, wait, we really should be doing this or that um, in regard to our connection with, with the team. Chelsea, you feel free. You always have good questions. <laughs> um, so I felt like the training was really, really helpful and it gave us a clear sort of direction to go. Do we want to dive into that now? And we're not talking about that. We're talking about diving into it in July and August, which I think seems like a really good time to do that. So right. Just for Megan's benefit, just to see if because we have, um, Jackie had sent out, I'm, I don't think it's in your board, in people's board packets, but if you've, you've seen an email, um, she did a little synopsis of sort of those three main areas. So I, I'm more wondering if, we, if there's an area, another area that people have come up with just so that Megan's aware or if, if there's something that you think of, Megan, between now and July 13th, where you're like, oh, we should really be connecting on this mm -hmm. particular item, um, you can share it with, sure. with the board yeah. so that we make sure um, your input is there. But I'm, I'm under the, the assumption that we are all sort of on board with sort of taking these three um, items that sort of rose to the surface in our training to sort of have that guide us in our in our plan and do you want to just recap what those items were i mean just in like three three things so the three things were revisit ends policies and we talked about the portrait of a graduate which is a particular program that allows um that's it's sort of a canned program that we can use with the with the community to sort of look at what is our portrait. When we think about a student graduating from our system, what do we want them to have? Um, and we could use that process. Um, and then the other thing we, we, we talked about within that in terms of revisiting ends was looking um, at the ends data, data that was reviewed when the 
uh, strategic plan was done last June, I believe we finished. Um, and then just from there, if there are any other um, areas that come up where we feel like we want to um, gather more input from, from uh, owners, students, uh, other stakeholders in regard to our ends uh, policies so that we can give a little bit more specific direction um, to the districts. So that was one. <laughs> Number two was increasing community engagement. So um, even though uh, Lane and, and the high school offers a forums periodically that we might um, as a board take on the role of um, you know picking a topic area and and perhaps holding a forum uh, every once in a while uh, also looking at maybe developing some surveys to go out looking at strengths and challenges um, and then uh, and then also looking at ways that the board might um, engage with people outside of a, uh, the board meeting set. So that's the increased community engagement. That's step the second second uh, second next step. And then the third was to develop and implement a plan for board member onboarding and continuous board development. That's actually, that isn't really so much um, engaging with it. Well, it's a little bit of community um, involvement just in terms of uh, educating the community about how the board operates. Um, it's and, board education, yes. right? It's not yeah. development. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Right, that, that third one is more is more board development. So it's really those first two, just engaging the community a little bit more. And those were the, the two things that sort of bubbled up uh, from that training that we did. I mean, I wasn't there, unfortunately, but I do feel like reading that and um, being able to take in what we got in that big strategic planning process, I feel it was really valuable because we did get a lot of information and there was, um, you know, we did have that whole committee that worked on that. And so to be able to access that and use that and review that would be not only beneficial, but we have it. Mm -hmm. And I think a working meeting with a sole focus is the way to do it. I yeah. think it's something that should be done uh, as an agenda item. No. Right. So we'll so we'll plan on the July meeting then being a working meeting to work on our ownership linkage plan. Does that sound yeah and just that? And just that. I think uh, that I think I, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I think that sounds great to do that. And I also agree with Katja that we should review the um, strategic plan that the community came up with, not last year, but the year before, and really look at that as a very important piece of this. Okay. All right. So um, everyone should plan on the July 13th meeting, except for the one who's going to be on vacation. Um, and do we want to stick with the 6 p.m. start time? Mm -hmm. okay. so we'll, we'll, we'll just do. We'll just plan on that being the focus of what we do. Okay. So next, so that's been decided. Sorry, the print on this is so tiny. It's almost impossible to read. Um, and then the board education plan 
um, that that is this third um, area that sort of came uh, that came up when we did our training. Um, and I'm not sure when the board wants to. Do we want to hold like separate meetings for board training? Do we want to? Um, I don't know if anybody noticed, but uh, June 9th, so tomorrow, there is a webinar, a policy governance webinar that's being offered. Um, what I found with the VSBA is they hold them during the middle of the day when everybody's working. So it's like, yeah, I'm not, not going to be able to be there. But one of the things that you can do is you can sign up and then they just send you the link. So then you can watch it when you have when you're when you're available. So I would encourage actually um, I would encourage you to sign up. And if you don't, um, I have signed up, so I will have the link and I can I can send it out to, to people if they want if they want the link. It looks like it's gonna tomorrow, be right? yeah it's at noon tomorrow. Um, uh, so but they're gonna go sort of give a basics uh, kind of overview of uh, the policy governance government system. So um, that might be a nice thing for everyone just to, to do and then just to have as a review. Um, the other thing that we had talked about and I haven't done it yet is um, just getting everybody the um, Carolyn Oliver book. Um, so we'll we'll have that, and that can be something that, and again, it's something that you can do on your own time, that allows you to sort of read and digest. And then um, I think as we look ahead to next year in planning things out, we can think about um, areas that we would want to um, continue to do some board education. Uh, um, so that's just something um, that we can kind of be thinking about uh, starting in July and moving into August. So we'll, one of the things that I'm going to ask us to do in July, August-ish is to begin to put together what are some areas that the board wants to get some further education on. So. Um, but hopefully I can get the, book, the, the books ordered so that it can be something maybe that you read over the summer and, um, and then be better prepared as we enter into August to kind of think about this is where we want. Our theory on summer. I was just thinking challenge. that. I was like, that's <laughs> no, there you go. I've had summer reading. <laughs> <laughs> And and what what do board members do, are are we on board with that? Do people feel like as long as it's a bee tree? I've read several of her books. She's um, she makes she, it it's very. Um, practical and um, it doesn't it it makes things seem less uh, complicated um, so I think it would be great for everyone um, so. all right any any other um, things that board members are are have been thinking about in terms of Education development for the board. We, we probably should be thinking about who is going to be um, coming up for election. That'll be part of what we maybe want to organize and think about as we hit July and August, just so that we can, you know, check in and see if people are planning on staying on the board. And if not, think about sort of reaching out to community members early on so we don't have situations where we're um, kind of having to appoint after the fact and, and um, so that we can kind of get 
people on, on board. How's that sound? Excellent. Okay. Any other questions, concerns regarding education as a board? New board members, well, are, are you feeling up to speed or do you still feel like there's some information that you have questions about when you um, as as new board members because we haven't really done an official orientation at all right and we talked about doing that the i am definitely going to catch probably not at noon tomorrow but <laughs> the recorded version of the policy governance because i think there's, you know, the major questions are regarding that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll be helpful. Yeah. And uh, Chelsea, Rachel, and I, we got together and we talked about some information that we should do, but I'm not sure if people are ready for sort of another meeting to do sort of an, and we had talked about maybe having the whole board do sort of an orientation, but again, I'm not sure if that's, or maybe if we, that maybe would be something that we start in August with just sort of like, okay, we're regrouping, new year, let's just kind of go over some, some basic things about how our meetings run, that kind of thing. And then in March. Right. Yeah, it should be kind of a right. standing yeah. item in March. Like on the new board members come on. Yeah. Right. I mean, so it never look hurts at that to in, refresh in your, mm -hmm. six calendar. In. Right. <clears throat> yeah. We just need to get a. Oh, go ahead, Chelsea. So at this point, going forward, I think we should talk about the orientation and and sort of come up with it for the july meeting when we'd have our working meeting and then i think we should put it on the calendar so that it happens in march this next year so add it to the agenda for the july meeting no i i, I don't know <laughs> you don't think we should add it then? Put one item on that meeting i think okay okay well, then let's talk well, about I, it in August and then we can definitely put it on the like agenda or we can have a special meeting in March for new members to or for orientation. Okay. What do we do for the new members in the meantime though? Right. I know. Like, well, so, so, up so in August, to. maybe in August we can do the yeah. orientation oh. and then do it in March when everybody comes on new. No. <laughs> I don't think anyone's agreeing. So that's great. We're all no, nodding. Can't say I think, nodding. Right. The question is who do we want to get together again, the three of us, to just sort of go over sort of what we might do for a quick. Yes. Okay. You're willing to do that? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm willing to do that, Rachel. You think we can pull that together for August? I think we probably could. Okay. So let's we'll do try it, and... Let's do it like the week before. The week before the... <laughs> yeah, so, so we don't have to... Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we can talk about it in July, and then we'll... Right. And we it'll... When Chelsea's going to be reading the book. Mm -hmm. That summer reading challenge should be mm. a week before it's due. <laughs> Chelsea, you're... How do you know? How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Rachel, Chelsea, and I will will sort of put together sort of a brief for the August meeting. Um, okay. So, so our our committee will 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 um, be functioning for them. Do we want to have a motion giving us? We already have a second. We've already, we've already 
it is that yeah. subcommittee, so we're we're good to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's further board education. Um, so next up on the agenda is the second reading for the monitoring report um, compensation and benefits, BL 2.7. Um, and this one, Wayne just wanted us to take a look at revision number five to make sure we were okay with his interpretation. Um, yeah, the number number five. So this one, um, executive limitation, it kind of puts guardrails on the contracts and agreements that the district enters into with non-unionized employees um, and kind of service providers, you know, people that we contract out with to make sure that we're paying competitive rates and, and they're not excessive. Um, but one of the things that kind of jumped out at me a little bit was, you know, provision five is that the way that this is written, it gives me the authority to change pension benefits. Um, and I don't know if that was an actual intent of the board at the time or not. Don't have a problem with it, but it's it's an awful lot of, because most of the people in terms of pension benefits that this would affect would be the administrative staff themselves. It's not the teachers, it wouldn't affect any, any other group that I would have the power to do that. Because um, those are either controlled by contract or by um, state law, um, but it would give me the power to change the pension benefits for any of the principals and directors and, and whatnot and supervisors. And so when we talk about checks and balances, this is one I'm pointing it out because I'm for the sole purpose of saying, hey, this is a place where maybe you want some checks. I don't. But my reading that's incorrectly then though, because it says superintendent shall not establish or change pension benefits so as to cause unpredictable or unequitable situations. Mm -hmm. So then all he has to... Uh, I just have to give you some reason. Oh, is that it's equitable across the category. So, so if two districts in the state decide they're going to give each of their administrators $100,000 a year in yeah, pension benefits, I could make the reasonable argument that that's... Because they did it, we can do it here. So again, I'm not saying there's a problem. I don't intend to change in a dang thing, um, but it just, as we go through these, I, I'm trying to point out the areas where checks and balances will be a good thing. So what would be a check or balance to that one? That that decision is, any decision that's made on that is probably approved by the board. Or, yeah, that way approved. you have your oversight. Okay. Right? Or you don't establish and change pension benefits. Yeah, but that's, the, or you, yeah, reserve that to the board. So at the very least, I should be reporting it to the board, and I would think the board should. So it would be established or change pension benefits so as to cause unpredictable or inequitable situations without the board approval. No. Or. Yeah, but. I think the wording needs to be different. Um, it says in here, too, the superintendent will use statewide compensation data negotiate and establish salaries and benefits for all non-unionized employees. So you're saying that you could, if you're using statewide data that's available, mm -hmm. you're if, saying if, you if would you're, cherry pick, you could cherry pick mm -hmm. just two districts? You are, you are entering into a round of negotiations with staff where there is high competition for individuals. So the likelihood that you are going to see incredible compensation packages coming out so that they can secure a limited number of individuals over the next couple of years is very high. And so again, it's 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 timely and it might only you know be a concern during this point in time, but that's a concern to me. I mean, the the last conversation I kind of had with the union was, you know, they're because of the inflation, they're potentially looking at a 40% increase that they're going to ask for in negotiations. And teaching. I don't know if they intended that as a one year or a two year or a three year, but either way you look at it, that's a that's a lot. Um, and there've been some quirky things going on around the state, so people taking the extra money and using it to provide bonuses and and whatnot. Um, and so it's going to be a very confusing time about what the average, what the norm. Again, I'm not. I have no intention of doing anything weird, or but again, you have a 
oversight and duty and um, you know this is an area that might be very questionable for the next couple of years if i make consensus it's late in the day all right i appreciate you bringing it to our attention and if it's just a matter of being concerned about the um wording can we is that something we go yeah, you'd have to propose the wording. Yeah. Uh, probably Pietro. Yeah. You'd, you'd have to, it's a policy change, so it'd have to have two readings, you know, once you get, mm -hmm. get the wording down that you want. So, is this one that we should have reviewed by our legal to have us change the wording to make it more, have more oversight from the board? Yes. Yeah. So I, I want to come up with the word approval that we have in front of us in the, for the next reading or for the next cycle of reviewing this. Then we can yeah, because this always looks this back. Is, this is looking back. So this mm -hmm. gets approved yeah. today. And then, yeah. and then going forward. And then we can, calls. right. So if, if you decide to do that, what I, my recommendation is that, um, you know, if you decide to approve this policy as part of the motion to do that is add in, mm -hmm. you know, either charge me or Linda or somebody to reach out to PHO and find, you know, wording to add in a little bit of that oversight. So I'm fine with that. Um, so I move to approve uh, EL 2.7 compensation and benefits money report as written. However, provision five will be reviewed by our attorney. Um, how should I say that? Um, to establish language around what? Increased oversight. Thank you, Rachel. Um, Lane will reach out to the attorney. Second. Thank you. Very generous. I second. Uh, whoop, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so that's our monitoring of EL 2.7. Uh, any updates on the COVID operating plan? Uh, then no changes. Um, Basically, we're directed to follow the general guidance provided by um, the Vermont Department of Health um, and the Vermont Department of Health's guidance is all recommendations. Um, so probably if nothing changes as we get geared up to start the new school year in the fall, uh, the operating plan for, for COVID is going to be cut to its barest bones. It's probably just going to be a link on the website um, to the Vermont Department of Health's um, website itself and kind of a strongly worded recommendation from the district that folks should follow the Department of Health advice. Um, look at that, but there have been no changes recently. Okay. Any questions? Again, that was on the agenda so that board members would feel comfortable that he was doing what he needed to do to keep staff and students safe. Um, okay. Okay, so we're going to move forward to uh, the financial reports. Yeah. Our so the, the May financial report, we've got one, one month left um, before we close out the financial year because we run on a different cycle than most businesses. Most are, you know, January to January with us. It's, uh, it's July to June 30th. Um, we're in actually very good shape. We will have a very large surplus. A lot of that is due to all the federal funds that we've been receiving, as well as we've had um, with the, the new staff that have, have come on board this year um, and the new staff that we're predicting for next year. Um, a lot of them are not taking benefits. And um, benefits are incredibly expensive. They're about 40% of a person's overall package so, you know somebody's average um, teacher here is making making sixty five thousand. you know you figure out what 40 percent of that that's what the cost of their benefits are so if you get three four or five people that aren't taking them it, it adds up pretty quick um in terms of the surplus funds um once they are 
approved by the auditor. The auditor goes in, in and checks and gives us the actual dollar amount um, when the auditing happens. Um, and then my intent would be to do what we've been doing it is use it to subsidize future budgets to bring the tax burden down. Um, you know, we might be switching a little bit into reserve funds, um, but we do have some major financial considerations that have come out of the blue in the last uh, couple of weeks um, in regards to the cost of heating oil and in regards to the cost of diesel for our bus transportation. Um, based on my calculations on the current costs as of yesterday, right, because we set our budget a year in advance, um, we're looking at about 350000 to 400000 based on the costs here and now above and beyond what was budgeted for. And every district in the state is going to be facing this problem. Um, so I did send out a, a, a notification to the Vermont Superintendents Association to start putting it on people's radar. Um, and so we'll just have to wait and see how, how those, those prices change over time. Um, so we've been talking a little bit with the cabinet, um, especially today about, you know, ways that we can manage that, that increase when, when the time comes. Not easy, but it's there. But right now we're in good shape. You're looking at a million plus for a surplus. Any, any questions? Finances? Okay. Uh, legislature came to a close. Are there any um, things that are impact our district? In yeah, I can give you three or four. Um, typically, what happens is after the legislation, the legislative session closes, the DSA, Vermont Superintendents Association, and Vermont School Boards Association, puts out an update on what the changes are. They have not done that yet. Because even though the legislature is closed, a lot of those bills are sitting on the governor's desk, and so they can't really write about what's changing until he decides what he's signing and what he's not. Um, there are a few that he has signed that may have a dramatic impact, um, not necessarily next year. Um, so the first one was the S100, um, and they that was about uh, universal free lunch and breakfast to all students. Um, they did put in a one-year pilot program to provide that free breakfast and lunch um, for next year. They are paying for that out of the American Recovery Act, uh, the monies that we've been using to keep the schools running um, during the time of COVID, but it's a one-shot deal. If the state decides to continue this program after those federal funds dry up, um, we're looking at $29 million of an increase to the Ed Fund, uh, potentially. And so if the money were to be pulled from that Ed Fund in future years, um, the average homeowner would see about a $200 increase in their rate of taxes to support that. Um, so it's, it's potentially a big deal. And that's if you have an average priced home, if you have something that's more expensive, you know, obviously your, your, your tax rate, the taxes that you're paying are gonna go up even more. Um, Senate Bill 139 was signed into law and that prohibits schools from having mascots or other identifying materials based on rape race, creed, color, national origin, sexual orientation, or gender identity, or any groups associated with the repression of others. Um, and so that one was passed. Um, Act 173, we've talked about in the past, but to remind folks of what it is, it's um, a plan that was put on the books probably four years ago to change how the state funds special education. And it does go into effect July 1st. They decided not to delay it um, uh, despite COVID. Um, we did our calculations in planning for next year's budget, knowing that this was going to go into effect and got the best formula as we could from the state at the time. Um, we saw a $200,000 loss uh, in money that we would normally expect from them, but we did build that $200,000 into the budget request, um, so it should be covered. Um, on a slightly brighter side, um, the governor did sign into effect the new funding formula that controls what schools receive from the Ed Fund. Um, you know, we've talked about the waiting studies and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, it is very likely that the district um, will recoup some of that lost money in terms of um, special education once this goes into effect because we have high poverty and poverty is weighted very highly. Uh, can't give you an actual number, um, but hopefully it reverses all, if not more, of the $200,000 loss from the state. Um, problem is, is it'll be a couple of years that won't go into effect until 2020. And so those are the, those are the piggies right now. 
and hopefully, you know, next time um, he'll have decided what he's signing, what he's rejecting, or what he's going to let go into passage without signing. Okay. Any questions about, about that? We also, the VSBA, if you read their stuff, they'll they tend to sort of keep us up to date with that as well. Um, so I put the, the annual agenda in the packet. Um, so this every year, um, so that's the month to month, um, and there is it. Okay, so uh, it's the month to month list of sort of the things that the board uh, gets put on the agenda. Should be uh, right there. Yeah, it is. It is, yeah. So it's right after or before the facilities report. Um, and this year, we um, basically we said as a board, let's just go with the the. Um, annual agenda that had been there in the past. And um, this may be something that, again, I'm going to encourage us to maybe look more closely at in July, because as we do our ownership linkage plan, we're going to need to sort of fit those things in there. Um, some of this, it's just, it's it's been done from year to year. It's sort of our our scheduling of when we're monitoring particular um, policies. Um, so those that's that's pretty much uh, kind of standard. Some of the budget stuff is standard because we do that every year. So that's in there as well. Um, but um, it seems like the board development row um, might have things in addition to policy uh, training, governance training, and also that's where the orientation would go in, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, no. yeah. Right. Yeah. And if we're doing it by end, uh, I don't mm -hmm. know word it but twice a year. You can start that agreement again. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we'll 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 have our orientation in here. In March. And then in March. And then in and then in March. Instead of orientation. So I just want folks to be aware of that. So as you, as you think about, um, you know, what what our year is going to look like. And again, this sort of outlines for you too, sort of our working year. So we're coming to a close now, and we're looking ahead to the to the um, to the coming year to make sure um, we're doing to do but this gives you the schedule of when we're we're reviewing particular um, policies and that sort of thing this, I, I just have with the ends monitoring when i just mm -hmm. look at this you know mm -hmm. the march meeting is always the meeting where we have new board members we have organization the board we're going to have orientation i feel like it's really hard to throw in like i'm seeing one two three four ends monitoring um items for a month and mm -hmm. we have new board members who are just kind of trying to understand that first meeting and getting a lot of information so again i'm not knowing you know looking at these if these are things that we decide we still need to hear as a board and my recommendation would be potentially if it's if it's possible we move those to the april meeting because i just feel like as a as a new member coming in and having to then try to understand all this mm -hmm. new stuff and then have to hear these ends monitoring reports it's just a lot right mm -hmm. and the the other thing is this year we because we've changed around a little bit we we didn't do the those we didn't do that no year. i know I, yeah that's right. um so we decided to put the um right. newsletters and stuff in for the elementary reports right right so again if people want to uh sort of think about things that they um again in in preparation to the july and august meetings to sort of have a sense this is going to drive the work that we do as a board so um we want to kind of make sure that we're um focusing on on the work that we need to be doing um and 
part of part of what I'm looking for is input from the board um, because this is something that um, in our policies they want the chair to kind of be um, leading the board in that direction. But I also want some input and direction from the board because um, we work as a unit, not not just me telling not you just what. Anne. Not just Anne. I'm not a board of Anne. I'm a board of. Um, all of you. So as you kind of look ahead. Um, well, I'm correct. Also, we didn't see some of these things this year. Like we didn't do the RTCC senior profile, correct? Right, right. A bunch of these are right. I think uh, what Linda put in was what? I've been I just I've left been what was there last yeah. year, basically, because <laughs> right, right. I didn't know what you guys what wanted, wanted to, do. to do. So what about yeah. community events? <laughs> what did they used to look like in April, May? And June? Board members would do what were called direct inspections. That was a part of um, when Brent had his ends monitoring mm -hmm. piece up that, you know, you would go to things like maybe view the eighth grade uh, portfolios to, as part of maybe critical thinking and just see, you mm -hmm. know, if you felt that that was a good indicator that, you know, students are doing proper thinking critically or those sorts of things. <laughs> That, that I remember when I was looking through stuff my first year. Yeah, so yeah. they had a uh, booth at uh, 4th of July once. To, I think they had some surveys and different things. I remember right. that. This, um, the community engagement, this is going to be our ownership linkage plan. That's what that's going to be, mm -hmm. become. Um, so, so that's what will take place in there. Um, The EL monitoring is pretty standard. And the ENDS monitoring, the way that um, part of the reason why we pulled some of that, some of this other stuff off is basically it was not really ENDS related. It was more how how the elementary schools are are what they're doing and how they come up with the data. So it was, it was, it was a fair amount of work for the administrators to put this report together, and it wasn't really board. The board is looking at the outcomes; they're not looking at how they're doing it. Um, and so we pulled that from that. But that's something again, as a board, we need to think about. We get that one ends report from Lane, and. October actually is more like when it's available, or at least it seems to be. It's whenever the data comes yeah, in. Yeah, it seems because he's relying primarily on state data. Um, you know, and remember our ENDS report, and this is what gets a little bit difficult. Our ENDS report is going to be an ENDS report of the last year. So it'll be actually this year's data and and so again when we think beyond october you know do we want to do some little um, sort of check-ins with the lane in some way that's looking at outcomes that are that are more timely to the current time period and i don't i don't know if that's something that the board will want to do or um, and that may be again um, an area that I feel like the board and 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 I would say myself need need um, need to continue to uh, improve and understand is our monitoring of the outcomes because that's really our main job is to be thinking about what is it that we want the district to be producing for students and and monitoring that and being able to check in it along the, the way to make sure we're on track for that. You know, you don't want to wait until your kindergartner's a, a senior to say, oh, wait, shoot, we should have been doing this. So it's kind of thinking about um, what little check ins would be useful for the board to say, yes, we're on track, we're moving toward our the ends that we are hoping that students will have by the time they finish the system. So, um, so
So that area of the annual agenda, we may we may want to add some things, but you know the old reporting was very means oriented, and I think we need to focus on outcomes and thinking about what outcomes we might want to be looking at. So that first ends report will be outcomes for for this year from the 2022 20, or 21 22 year. And then we can maybe focus on uh, the 22-23 for from October onward, and figure out what we might want to look at as a board. So those are some some things to kind of think about. And as you're reading, um, you know, the the Carolyn's book, I think it will help you kind of think about ah what you know what should we be doing um, and looking at all right so um and we'll so i will be putting together hopefully kind of a some of this stuff is just the the executive limitations that monitoring will stay the same and i'll play around a little bit with it we'll revisit in august to kind of look at um, we will have put in our, our ownership plan and maybe our begin to think about so board education could be in there too as sort of things that we want to do throughout that this coming year in terms of areas that the board feels like it needs uh, more information um, to learn more about. Okay. All right. So we are moving on. There's two different agenda items here. Uh, facilities report, Lane. So the um, facilities report, uh, anything that's new from last time that we met is at the very top and highlighted. Um, a lot of that right now is intended to be, be paid for with um, surplus funds. Um, a lot of the other items, some of them have been on there a little longer than I like. Um, but part of the reason is that there's massive supply chain issues, um, like repairing the fire that happened here at, at RES. Um, we're still waiting on the heating unit um, to come over from China, I believe it is. Um, and we have no date for when that's going to happen. Um, a couple of other things that are kind of above and beyond the report, I think it's important to, to keep the board informed about, is that a year or two ago, we did replace the entire roof on um, Randolph Elementary School, and there have been leaks, um, yeah. Dis yeah. despite the warranty. Um, the company has come out several times to try to fix it, has been unable to, and then they have been becoming slowly non-responsive um, so i have authorized uh, the facilities managers to get together with their legal counsel to force a solution uh, they've got a, we've got a pretty strong warranty that, that needs to be honored and we expect them to do that plus if any damages happen because of the leaks we're going to expect that they were to fix and replace that as well um, central office right now is being prepared to undergo a moderate um, renovation uh, now that the student facilities needs have been taken care of so there will be a moderately large um, request from reserves coming up probably at the July meeting. Um, that building, I don't know if it's ever been redone since it was purchased. It's an ancient farm building. It used to have a barn on the back is my understanding. Um, I have unfinished walls in my office that just have the fiberglass sticking out. So <laughs> it'll, it'll be nice to, to, get, to get that up to speed. Um, plus, I'm, I'm worried there's a little water damage that's um, happening in areas that have been taken care of. And we've got to prepare for the um, assistant superintendent that will be starting on July 1st uh, get those spaces up, 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 to, up to speed. Um, all of the district's smart boards, so these are the main units that the teachers present lessons to the kids through, um, that are used in classrooms across the entire district will be replaced this summer. There are 121 of them. Um, most of the existing ones were purchased over a, a decade ago. They have a useful life of five years, so it is, it is more than time. Um, they are being replaced with something more along those lines. That's a starboard. Uh, they're actually being replaced with an upgraded version of that called Clear Touch. 
Um, they're absolutely fabulous. They should have at least a 10 year lifespan um, and they do not require a projector. Uh, they're incredibly light. They can be mounted on the walls or better yet, they can be placed on a cart and wheeled to wherever you need them. Um, and so that's happening across the district this year. Um, outdoor classroom spaces at RES and Brookfield are complete. Um, and we already talked about, because um, it's kind of facilities, um, the increased cost of people um, for next year um, and what the impact may be. Um, and so those are kind of the additionals uh, above and beyond that's in the written report. Unless there's questions on anything. No question. And for, for folks that are new, how this report works is um, once the work is complete or the equipment that was purchased comes in, I do a direct inspection. Um, Rada does them as well. And so if you see our initials next to it, it means that, yeah, we've gone out, we've looked, it, the work was actually done or the equipment is actually done. Um, just a, a check to make sure that the district's money is uh, going to where they are supposed to be going. Uh, next up are the um, <clears throat> required policies that we had reviewed and updated, and we saw them last time for our first reading. We're on the second reading, um, and we to vote to approve. Um, and last time, my only suggestion was there were a few that um, optional. were uh, optional and they were a repeat of what we already have in our policies as a board. So, uh, so I pulled those out. Um, I stuck with just the required changes. Um, in the case of the one, two, three, four, five that remain, um, we currently have all of these policies in place right now. Um, the problem being is that uh, the laws and the regs that feed into those policies have changed a little bit. Um, so the Vermont School Boards Association legal team usually gets together, kind of reviews that and says, hey, based upon how the laws and the regs changed, you need to update the language of your policies um, to kind of match. And so there's nothing really dramatic in the changes um, there with the exception of F29, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, most of them are just minor updates to language. So C7 um, is the student attendance policy. And really what it does is it defines truancy and how districts are expected to respond to it. Um, C1 on student records uh, basically outlines um, FERPA, right? The, the Family Education Records Privacy Act. Um, Wait, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Sorry, on um, code C7, who, who is the truant officer? So in July, that is one of the things that you will be doing is you will be determining, um, I will recommend it'll be the principals um, who the truant officers should gotcha. be and then the board appoints them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, typically it's been it's been, been me and the principals. And they've been willing to take that risk. Right. Doesn't matter, they have to be. <laughs> and then they're the most logical because they know the kids the best, uh, especially if they're, they're, they're students that have, have been not attending. Uh, and so C1, student records, like I said, that's basically outlining our responsibilities under FERPA. We have to do that anyway under federal law. So it's kind of a redundant policy, but the state's made it the required one. C8 um, on pupil privacy um, outlines our responsibilities under the Pupil Privacy Rights Amendment. And that focuses on what we do with data that we collect as surveys, what we're allowed to do with it. Um, F29 is a new policy in this one. We actually uh, is required by law. Um, the VSBA had not developed a model policy on this one. So I went to Pietro's uh, legal team. They took a look at it and, and what you see is, is what they've developed. Um, this one requires sexual health education and providing high school students with access to condoms. That was a state law that passed, I think, a year or two ago. Uh, B1 uh, is about substitute teachers. What it does is it defines the qualifications if somebody wants to be a substitute teacher. 
and it ensures that we're training them on mandatory reporting requirements. In other words, you know, if you suspect child abuse, this is what you have to do. So it goes to the five required. Are they also trained in purple? Uh, the substitutes we do, um, not as extensive a training as we would do with um, the regular staff. I have pulled them in in the past. I do a pretty extensive training with the new teachers during the boot camp, and I pulled the, the subs in at those times and paid them for the ones that kind of can show up. But they do get a packet at each school that explains the other parts and pieces that they're expected to be. Yeah, it's not great, but. This um, F29 on the policy, it says F30. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. I'll go back and make sure. Let's see here. See here. See here. Did I put it says F right here instead of F30. I'm actually the one that created the code for it. So because it didn't have one because of the SBA. So F30. Gotcha. And thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as a board, we um we just need to um we need to approve these policies so they can be in effect for the district. So unless are there other questions for Wayne in regard to any of these particular policies? And again, remember as the board, pretty much we've required that he follow um, federal and state law, meaning that he has the district adopt all of the, the policies that are required. So if we don't adopt these, we're putting in, in okay. out of compliance with our own policy that says he needs to follow those laws. So, so if we accept the state and federal required policies updated as written. Okay, do we have a second? Seconded by Sarah. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, you got Chelsea too. Mm -hmm. that like. Raising her hand. Yeah. And next up is our consent agenda. And in there, we have the minutes from the last. Uh, regular meeting and the special meeting. Um, we have the arbitrage, which is just the board approving that um, the district can uh, borrow money, right? And this is more from, um, and that needs to be in the motion. More from Robin, from the. So what, what in particular? Pardon? What what are you that the, the, the motion um, see e either everybody has to sign it or they can authorize you to sign it. The arbitrage. The loan documents, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and that's in this uh, that's what this approved arbitrage is, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then there there's the leap, which is federal funding, right? Uh, individuals with Disabilities and Education Act, it's an assurance page. In other words, uh, by signing it, we're agreeing that we will provide whatever data they need to provide to the federal government to show that the state's in compliance. Okay. And then uh, list of professional contracts issued since last board meeting. Oh, it was in the packet, but that's, that's enough. Packet. Yeah, but it's been updated because I've been doing contract this week. <laughs> um, so this is again, this is the district where we're just it's in the consent agenda because it's operational. It's what Lane and the district need to be doing in order to run the things. So um, do we have a motion to um, approve the consent agenda as it is? As a, or as one sleep. So moved. I second that. Any mm -hmm. discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Okay. Twenty point two. So that's approved. Um, and then we're moving on to the closing. Um, we have the principal's reports. We have Lane's report. Um, are there any questions regarding any of those? Members. Again, that's just information so the board is aware of what's going on in the schools. Okay, seeing no questions, I'm going to move on to the action recap. So we've made a lot of um, decisions about July and August. So um, at our July meeting, we're going to be working on our ownership linkage plan primarily. Um, and uh, Chelsea, Rachel, and I over the summer will be working on a uh, sort of an orientation review for all board members that we'll do in August. And um, hopefully board members will be um, receiving and reading the um, Carol and Oliver book and um, thinking about the board agenda for um, starting in August in terms of just sort of laying out our work for the year um, to provide input um, in that. Yes. So are we addressing the yearly agenda in the July meeting as well? Because it starts in August. So to review it or try to do it during a regular meeting in August seems like we're then kind of behind. Right. Although if we're, gonna, if we're August, going to adjust that plan, it seems like that right, needs to be done in July. Right. Um, usually in August, and we actually moved the superintendent's evaluation to um, October because we need we need to have that ends report um, from the from the previous year. So. Um, yeah, it says approve agenda and goals. That's sort of, and we could kind of, we can, we could probably spread that between um, August and September. It just seems like we're going to adjust the yearly agenda. It's, it needs to be done before we sit down at a meeting to approve it. Mm -hmm. Because. Mm -hmm. So, but I heard pretty clearly that we only wanted one agenda item for July. Mm -hmm. um, that needs to be added to the annual right i mean what will become what will be yeah, that working that. on in that meeting needs to be added to the annual agenda so it right might be yeah. Yeah. so we can broaden it a little bit yeah so. I, I have items that are pretty minor but would have to be looked at by the board for the august meeting uh for the july meeting for the july meeting uh oh <laughs> <laughs> so there'll be there'll be reserve fund requests um, oh right mm -hmm. right there will be updates to the master agreements, the smaller mm -hmm. ones, the admin one, the admin two, the supervisor and the confidential staff. Um, you will appoint truancy officers. Um, there's a funds policy discussion that we need to have because I'm still not clear from the auditors what that is. And then the auditor meeting. Oh, we're right. trying, to, we're that, trying to get that yeah. set up. She still hasn't confirmed if she, if she can do the date, but we're still trying to get that set up with her. Okay. They've been having problems because of staffing. Right. Like most right. folks. Right. Uh, so we're now two, <laughs> two months. <laughs> we, we do we do have a draft letter. There are no no real findings. Okay, so we'll so that it's it's growing a little bit the July meeting, but we'll try to keep it to the ownership plan, the annual meeting. <laughs> uh, and then and then. I'm going to I'm going to call it district operations really because it's it, that's a lot well and then and then it is some oversight on our part with the with the um, auditor. That's monitoring yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so that's sort of what what we'll be um, putting together for the agenda. 
for, for July. Okay. So any, any questions regarding that? No, I'm going to move forward. Um, so now we get to try um, our monitoring of our our new our new way of sort of looking at our process um, as a board and focusing us on our policies and how we're doing in terms of our own work as a board. Um, so um, we're going to take about 15 minutes. Uh oh, and that's going to put us a little bit behind schedule, but um, maybe we can go pretty fast and do it. Um, but we're going to be taking a look at policy 4.1 and you should have in your packet the next policy for, oh boy, for the July meeting. Um, <laughs> unless we want to push that. We could push we all have to it. go with Megan. We, we could push it on to the um, to the August meeting, what what do people think? What or do we just go for it? I'd like to push it on to the August meeting. Okay, I'm so we've got a lot happening in July. Okay, already. so we'll do the we'll we'll push that to the August meeting. We also um, the way that these are broken. I mean, we kind of talked about, and you weren't at the meeting, but we talked about how this really breaks down each part of the policy, and so. If we all commit to doing our homework before the meeting each time, it's pretty easy to just summarize and go through. And if there's any issues, I mean, it might not take a few minutes. As, yeah, right, right. Based on how we all right. feel about it, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but. Right. Okay, so. Um, any suggestions on how we go about doing this? Do we have a copy or should I just put it? A 4.1. The oh I have it. So I have yeah, all of our policies in a in a binder that that um Linda put together for me. And I find it super useful. I I'm old school, so I like paper. Um but I often find trying to pull them up uh, on the, you know, on the phone or on the computer during. And and Linda, you had mentioned to me way back when you did this that if other board members wanted to have a folder, mm -hmm. yeah. similar folder, she mm -hmm. had, it would be easy enough yep. for her to put together. So so just email me or something. Yeah. Okay. Or I can just bring some if you guys all want them. So did you not get one of these? I don't know because she wasn't. Yeah, she wasn't she was not oh, 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 I thought I had sent it off. Oh, or we did. Maybe it wasn't an email. I remember, I, I do remember seeing something like this. But yeah, she may have forwarded one to It wasn't something you sent to me for the package. Yeah, right? well, I sent you the next one. I sent you the one 4. for 4.2. And I can't remember if I did 4.9 or not. Nope, it would be in here. I think it's in the packet. Is it in the packet? 4.2 is. 4.2 is in the packet. Mm -hmm. 4.1. I'm looking yeah. for your stuff. It's you did share. Did I? Yeah, you shared the thing on. I I just didn't. I guess I didn't pair because I didn't I didn't know what to do with it. Okay. It wasn't. Um. That meeting. Okay, so so basically what we're doing is we're taking each piece of the policy and looking at um, how we're doing um, with it. So the first section, the board will govern lawfully observing the principles of policy governance model with an emphasis on an outward vision rather than in internal preoccupation, encouragement of diversity and viewpoints, strategic leadership more than administrative detail, Clear distinction of board and superintendent roles, collective rather than individual decisions, future rather than past or present, and proactive rather than reactive. So I'm curious 
<laughs> what people are are thinking in in regard to that. Anybody want to go first? So, and do people understand what what they're talking about when they when or what the policy means when outward vision rather than an internal preoccupation? So, in policy governance, again, we're looking out to the future. Where are we going? And we're looking at sort of the bigger picture as a board. It's a it the 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 model is trying to push us to think about what do students need by the time they finish and are we getting there or are we getting mired in the the operational um, aspects of of the district rather than the outcomes what what's being accomplished so i was rating us pretty poorly on on the outward vision and that's been something that we've struggled with as a board since the time that i've been um, on the board because um, I think we we get tied up in in um, sort of how things are being done rather than what we're what's being accomplished. Are you reading this overall in general or like this meeting? Oh, I was reading our our. Oh, I was reading like overall. Me too. Oh, sorry. Okay, that's and you were thinking meeting. Well, that's I didn't. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's an excellent so, question. I hadn't thought of it in that. Regard. Yeah, that's so. so yeah, that's so why that's, I was we're, having a hard time answering. Right, the, right. Yeah, I'm reading it. So, ah, are we supposed? I mean, so it's not going to change if we do this at the end of every meeting. If it's an overall, I feel like it should be more of a present. Like at the end of each meeting, I thought right. we were doing. I thought we were re reviewing our policies, and because obviously we can't do every policy each meeting, we were just looking in depth overall, like okay, how we feel one about the time. policy yeah. one at a time. Because by the time we get through all of them, it'll be like okay, well let's revisit. That's how I interpret yeah. it. Yeah, and not just rating it. how we're doing, but yeah. the policy itself. The policy yeah. itself, it's still, like, it's yeah, still is, is well the one. wording okay? Are we yeah. following this? Are we, you know, mm -hmm. that's how I took it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just did, I mean, when I made my notes, I was just thinking, like, in general. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay. That was a question that I had. Right. Thanks for which, which leads us to, to do we still feel like we do want that sort of overall how did we do in this meeting no no mm -hmm. yeah because that that seems seem pretty different. good at knowing how the meeting went or not without yeah. Yeah. Right, sure at the end. right right um no i've like when i was doing this i thought it was helpful just to go over piece by piece what we were doing and then you know I mean, when I was answering the questions at the end, I just was, you know, overall how I felt mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. seemed relevant. I guess my question being, again, on the outside, since I was unable to be at this meeting, but how are we using this information? A, how are we reviewing this in a way that's productive? And then B, how are we using the information that we garner from our results to like, move forward, either make adjustments, make changes, revisit items. I guess the practicality is what my concern is, and maybe that's just obviously because I wasn't unable to be at this meeting, but. So um, if you look at the questions in the back, mm -hmm. so so it's um, so that we can look at, select one area of this policy for improvement over the next year. Right. So it could mean just, you know, what what are we, do we change sort of what we're doing um, in some way? Do we add something to our annual agenda? Um, there could be things like that. Um, what actions we will we commit to taking in the next year to improve our application of this policy? Mm -hmm. Who will be accountable for the leadership to ensure it happens? And when will we, re will we reassess our progress? So just like with the, and this came up because just like the other policies that we have, we as a board need to be monitoring our own. So we monitor 
the executive limitations, we monitor the ends, but part of what we need to be monitoring is how we're working as a board also. Are we doing what our policies tell us we should be doing? But I think in the interest of time management, the, mm -hmm. the, the grid is the work that we do on our own mm -hmm. and brainstorm right. mm -hmm. ourselves. It's those questions at the end that uh, I just get concerned, but again, we get very bogged down. We get in the weeds mm -hmm. a lot. And I think the point of this exercise is for the weeds to happen before we're sitting here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So which areas were rated as some of the, let's skip the first one because that's just listing. And there are mm -hmm. a lot of people here and we might have different answers someone throw out an area of the policy that could be improved right so i'm i'm, I'm not trying to cut people like off it. i like it keep going with this it. is <laughs> the, this is about evaluating us we didn't mm -hmm. like the you know 12 second let's give a three four five right yeah um but it is just meant to reel us in right keep us are we doing it well no okay what can we improve Let's do it. So for my example on this, the one area of this policy, I just said number six. And then going off of that, I just said, what are, what actions are we doing? And it, this document is what we're doing. So mm -hmm. we're going to discuss it each to each time we're working on it. Number six was um, we'll monitor and discuss the board's process and performance on a regular basis. I think we talked about that in the meeting, like we have this self-evaluation and we always just kind of go through the, the motion motions. every time and we actually aren't talking about it. So I was like, okay, well, this is something that we're recognizing. We, we're choosing to do this self-evaluation differently. We're going to review our policies. And then as far as accountability, I just said our the entire board, um, along with Anne, providing the next policy for discussion a month prior. So we have time to review it. And then as far as um, reassessing progress, I just said, know maybe one year like as however long it takes to get through the policies i didn't really know but each time we are going through the policies you know just thinking about the month prior and like oh you know are we following what we're attempting to work on the month before mm -hmm. i don't know that was, that's my example i <laughs> so and number four we're doing we 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 had it as a never done because that's number four was continual board development will include orientation of new board members in the board's governance process and periodic board discussion of process improvement um and we have well i should i say we rarely but we did do, we did talk a little bit to, in this board meeting about just being clear about how we do open meetings, how that's done in terms of, you know, knowing, knowing the process. So we're clear on that. Um, and we're adding to our annual agenda and we're going to work out a, a orientation. Um, an orientation for new board members and hopefully in August we'll have our first run through of at least some basic orientation steps as a board. Um, so that will be happening. Um, we're sort of doing some of this stuff. Yeah. But again, it, it's helpful. I find this really helpful because it 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 regrounds us in our policies so we're focusing on what our job is and not getting caught up in other things that are interesting but are not what what we need to be doing this for i think the more we use this as a tool it will become a little more comfortable with using yeah. it as well mm -hmm. yeah this was kind of like a dress rehearsal yeah right until right Right. And your question was awesome because I hadn't even thought of it in regard to just the meeting. I was yeah. I was right where you were. Yeah. So okay. Um, so yeah. 
So uh, I didn't yeah. know if we had gone over that at the training, but I just didn't remember yeah. no, that, was that very good. part of it. Or, yeah. Any other um, observations? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move us along then, um, and we are we are gonna do policy 4.2, but we'll do that in August, um, and everyone hopefully will have gotten through um, Carolyn's book too, which will help. I think it'll help in this process as well. Okay. <laughs> I'm pushing the book. <laughs> So, and if you want us to order that, you need to give me the information about yeah. it, okay? Yeah, it just she just sent it out earlier this week, and I haven't I haven't had the chance to it. Um, and then it'll probably be easiest once we get them in. People can just pop by and pick, pick them up. Sure. Is that you're looking at me with a question? It's no, you're clear. Okay. <laughs> we could mail it to you, Rachel, if you name it to me. <laughs> okay. Um, Don't spend the postage. Come <laughs> okay. So I'm changing review of 4.2 is going to go to August now. All right. So now we are. Um, we're going to be moving into executive session um, for a student. Chris Boyle is here. Chris, are, are you there? Yes, I am. Perfect. So, um, okay. When they move over to executive session, there is a, another link that I sent. Do you have that? Yes, I do. Awesome. I see, see you all over there. Go into executive session. You're, you're OK. I second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Does that mean can you be adjourned again?